All right, guys, today we're going to look at the second section in Chapter 9, so 9.2, which is called Relations. So before we do that, I just want to review a little bit of what we talked about before. We're going to review quadrants really quick. So let's just do a couple of questions where we have to name the quadrant or the axis on which the following points lie on. So the first point we want to look at is negative 3, negative 4. So remember, negative 3 represents the x, so we're going to go negative 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3. Negative 4 represents the y, so we're going to go negative 4 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, which means our point is right here. And this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, so it should be in quadrant 3. Okay, so now we have negative 2, comma 10. Go ahead and try that one yourself, see if you can't get the answer correct. And you should have gotten quadrant 2 because negative 2 is your x, so you go left 2. And then 10 is your y, so you're going to go up 10, so you'll be in quadrant 2. Go ahead and try this one, 15, comma 0. Okay, you should have said the x-axis because if you go 15, that's the x value, so you're going 15 this way. And your y value is 0, which means you're not going up or down, which means you're still on the x-axis. So you should have said x-axis. This one. Okay, you should have gotten quadrant 1 because your x is 0 0.5, which is about halfway, and then 253 up, so you're still in quadrant 1. This one here, go ahead and try that. And you should have gotten the y-axis. So 0 represents your x, which means that you are not moving left or right. And then 0.5 is your y, which means you're going to move up 0.5. So you are still on the y-axis. Okay, try this one. So this one is the y-axis and the x-axis because it is at the origin. So it is on the y-axis and the x-axis because it is the origin. All right, let's talk about what is a relation. Relation has a super simple definition. It is a set of ordered pairs. So remember, we talked about a set. A set is just a collection of objects that we use the set brackets, the braces, and we put them around the collection, okay? Ordered pairs, we learned in the last lesson, it's an x and a y value, okay, that has parentheses around it. So a relation is a set so we're going to use our, our braces, and inside those braces are going to be ordered pairs. Okay, so now let's talk about domain and range. Okay, domain is all of the x values, where range is all the y values. So again, domain is x and range is y. Domain is the set of x values, while range is the set of y values. So if we want to know what the domain of relation A is, we would look at all the x's. So what is the x for this ordered pair? Well, it's 2. So 2 is going to be in our domain. What is the x value for this ordered pair? Negative 3. So that will be in our domain. The x value for this ordered pair is negative 4. So negative 4 will be in our domain. And the x value for this ordered pair is 4. So 4 will be in our, in our domain. So when we write domain, we need to write it as a set. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to name the set. That's, and we're going to name it set D, D for domain. Pretty simple. So we're going to say that set D is equal to, okay? So domain is equal to, and remember domain is a set, so we're going to go ahead and use our braces to show that we have a set. And then we're just going to list in order all of those x values. So the smallest one was negative 4, so we wrote negative 4 first. The next smallest was negative 3, so we write negative 3 next. And then 2 comes after that, so we'll write 2. And then 4 was our largest x value, so we'll write 4 last. Okay? We're going to do the very similar thing with range. Okay? Range, we're going to call set R. R for range equals... Okay, range is also a set, so we're going to use our brackets. Okay, so we're looking at y values. I have a 3, I have a 2, 
I have a negative 3 and a negative 3. So the smallest number is negative 3. It actually happens twice, right? Negative 3 and negative 3. But when I write it in my set for my range, I'm only going to write it once, just negative 3 once. And then I'm going to write my next number. My next y is 2, and then my next biggest y is 3. So that's my range. All right, so let's try it again. Give the domain and range of relation C. Okay, so relation C has this ordered pair, this ordered pair, this ordered pair, this ordered pair, and this ordered pair. So there's five ordered pairs there. So let's go ahead and see if you can't figure out what the domain is. Remember, domain is the set of X's. So go ahead and look for that. Okay, so if you are looking for the domain, you're looking for the first number that appears in the ordered pair. So we were looking for negative one, we're looking for two, two, three, and negative two. So the smallest number that appears first is negative two, then negative one. Even though two appears twice as an X, we, we only have to write it once, right? And then three appears also as an X value, so we write three. Okay, so notice that I also wrote D equals to say that the set of the domain, so D equals, and then I also have my braces to show that is a set. Okay, and then for range, that's the Y value. So three, zero, three, negative two, negative four, all those should appear in the set for the range. So I'm gonna write R equals because it's a set, I'm gonna go ahead and have my set brackets, okay? And then I'm gonna have negative four because that's the smallest y. The next smallest y is negative two, okay? And then my next smallest y is zero. And then actually my largest y is three. And three appears twice, but I only have to write it once in the range. All right, next example. Give the domain and range of relation r. In relation R has these ordered pairs. It has 0, 1, negative 3, 2, 5, 4, and 2, negative 3. So let's go ahead and see if you can't figure out domain and range. All right, so our domain is our x's, right? So the smallest x that appears is negative 3. The next smallest is 0. And then we have 2 and 5. So when I write my domain, I'll write D equals, and I have my braces, and then I'll write them in order. So negative 3, 0, 2, 5. And my range, which is my Y's, I have 1, I have 2, I have 4, and negative 3. So when I write them in order, I get negative 3, 1, 2, and 4. Okay, so now I need the domain and range of this segment. So this segment starts here, and it goes all the way here, okay? So when we think about the domain of a segment, it's very important to think about this. It's, it, you need to realize that, that even though domain deals with x's, so we're dealing horizontally. So horizontally, two, one, two, three, Four, horizontally, all your x's have to be bigger than negative 4. So when we write it, we're going to write domain equals, and we're going to write it reading left to right. So negative 4 is going to appear first, because negative 4 is the smallest number x can be. But x can be any number between negative 4 and and it looks like one, two, positive two. So X can be negative four, it can be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, because it's this, it's any X on this line, okay? It also can be 2.5, 2.75. It could be, or I'm sorry, not 2.75, because that would be greater than two. So 1.75, 1.8, 1.9, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 
but it has to be bigger than negative four. So let's look how it's read. D is equal to negative four is less than equal to X, which is less than equal to two. So look at the segment. Negative four, which is this X right here, is less than or equal to X, which means X can be all of this. And X is less than or equal to two, which is right here where it ends. So again, it's read left to right. Negative four is less than or equal to X, less than or equal to two. And your range, so your range is just your Y values, okay? So your Y values are up and down. So notice, no matter what X is, your Y is three. So your range is a very small set. The only number it has is three because your Y will always be three no matter what X is. All right, so if the segment is changed to a line, what is the relations domain and range? So a segment ends, it has two endpoints. But if it's changed to a line, that means it's gonna continue on forever, right? So if it's continuing on forever, that means your domain is going to be all real numbers. It can be any number, it continues on for infinity if it's a line. However, your range is still going to be three because remember we said it didn't matter what X was, your Y would always be three. So your range is gonna stay the same. So then we set the set of three. All right, so now let's look at another example. We want to write the set of ordered pairs for the relation shown. And we wanna name the relation C, okay? C would be one, two, three, one, two. So C would be three comma two. D would be one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So D would be one comma six. And then E would be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So E would be three comma negative six. And then F would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So F would be zero comma negative five. So all of those ordered pairs that we just found, we need to name them the relation C. So I'll write C equals Okay, so relation C is, and then we'll put our set brackets because a relation is a set, and then we just list all those ordered pairs that we just found. So next example, we want to write the set of ordered pairs for relation G, so a relation called G, if Y equals 2X for each ordered pair and the domain of the relation is negative 2, 0, 1, Three. Okay, so we have to write a relation. And a relation is a set of ordered pairs. And ordered pairs are an X and a Y value. And all they give us is an equation that says Y equals 2X and a bunch of X's, right? They give us the domain. So they say that there's a negative two for an X, a zero for an X, a one for an X and a three for an X. But they didn't tell us, well, what's the Y that goes with the negative two? What's the Y that goes with zero? What's the, the Y that goes with one? What's the Y that goes with three? They didn't tell us that. All they did was give us this equation that says your Y's are equal to two times, oh, two times X. So basically what we have to do is use this information to figure out what the Y will be for our ordered pair. So we'll know that our X part of our ordered pair would be negative two, but to figure out the Y part, we have to let X be negative two for this equation right here. Let's see what that looks like. So again, we're gonna use this equation Y equals two X to figure out what our Y's are for our ordered pairs. Okay, so when X is negative two, Y is going to be negative four. So we just simply plugged in x equals negative two in for x. So y was equal to two times negative two, which is negative four, okay? So when x is zero, y is zero. When x is one, y is two. When x is three, y is six. 
Okay, so now we can get our, our, our relation. Okay, so this is relation G. So we're going to say G equals because it's relation G. We're going to go ahead and put our set brackets because the relation is a set. And now we write our ordered pairs. So an ordered pair, remember, is an X and a Y. So we write our X first. So our first X is negative 2. And when X is negative 2, Y is negative 4. So we're going to write negative 2, comma, and then for our y, we're going to write negative 4. So for our next x value, we had 0. And when x is 0, y was 0. So we have the ordered pair 0, 0. For our next ordered pair, x was 1. And when x was 1, y was 2. So for our ordered pair, we're going to write 1, comma, 2. Our next x value was 3. Okay, And when x was 3, y was 6. So our ordered pair would be 3, comma, 6. So next relation, I'm sorry, next example, we want to graph the relation. It's relation G, the one that we just wrote out. We already have the ordered pairs figured out. So we need to graph it. So we just need to graph these five points on our graph. Okay, so we graph them there. So example five, graph the relation J if Y equals X plus three for each ordered pair and the domain of the relation is negative 4, 0, 3. So when they say that the domain of the relation is negative 4, 0, 3, they're really saying that x is negative 4, x is 0, and x is 3. You need to figure out the y parts of those ordered pairs. Okay, so we have to do that. And we're going to use the equation y equals x plus 3. And the first number in the domain was negative 4, so we're going to let x be negative 4. So we're going to substitute negative 4 in for x. So that means y is equal to not x plus 3, but negative 4 plus 3. So that means y is equal to negative 1. Okay, so we plug x equals 0, and when x is 0, y is 3. When x is 3, y is 6. Okay, so we get the relation j equals, because it's relation j, we have set brackets because it's a set. And then when x was negative 4, y was negative 1. So we get the ordered pair negative 4, negative 1. When x was 0, y was 3. So we get the ordered pair 0, 3. When x was 3, y was 6. So we get the ordered pair 3, comma 6. And we can graph those points, which is called graphing the relation. So we graph those points. Now let's look at another example. We want to graph the relation A, and, and relation A has the following points. 1, 2, negative 2, 3, 3, and negative 1, 3. And we also have to give its domain and range. So let's look at domain and range first. So remember, domain is the set of x's. So remember, we're going to write a set, so we have to name the set. Let's call it D for domain, okay? So D equals set brackets, because domain is a set, and we have to list the x values. So we have 1, we have negative 2, we have 3, and we have negative 1. We have to write them in order, though. So when we write them in order, it would be negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 3. Okay, so now let's get this, the range, which is also a set. So it's also going to be an R equals, okay, and then set brackets. But your range is the Y values, so the 2, the 2, the 3, and the 3, okay? So remember, we don't have to write 2 twice, and we don't have to write 3 twice. We just have to write them once. So our range is R equals set brackets 2 comma 3. So now we have to graph the relation. In order to graph the relation, we just graph the points. We graph 1, 2. We graph negative 2, 2. We graph 3, 3. And we graph negative 1, 3. Which is shown here. Those are the points graphed. All right, another example. Graph the relation B equals 1.5, 2.5. 2.25, 3.75. 5. And then 4, 5 and give its domain and range. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and think about what the domain is, pause the video for a second, write down what you think the domain is, and then unpause the video. Okay, so for domain, you should have gotten 
2.25 and 4. You also should have written D equals, and you also should have used set brackets in order to write it correctly, okay? So now pause the video again and try to get the range. So for range, you should have said R equals and then use set brackets, and you should have had these numbers, 2.5, 3.75 comma 5 okay so to graph the relation you're going to graph these three points you're going to graph 1.5 2.5 2.25 3.75 and the point 45 the graph should have looked something like this all right so now we want to write the set of ordered pairs for relation c if y is equal to 3x minus 2 for each ordered pair, and the domain of the relation is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So again, when they say the domain of the relation, they're saying that those are your x's. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's, which means that our relation should have 5 ordered pairs in it. So we have to plug each one of these x's into the equation to find y, so we can have an ordered pair because an ordered pair needs an x, but it also needs a y. So we're gonna figure out the y's of our ordered pair. Okay, so when we do that, when we plug in negative two for x, three times negative two is negative six, negative six minus two is negative eight. So we get the ordered pair negative two comma negative eight. Now we move on to our next x. Our next x is negative one. So we plug in negative one for x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. So we get the ordered pair negative 1 comma negative 5. Now we plug in x equals 0 into our equation. So 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So we get the ordered pair 0 comma negative 2. Our next x is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, so we get the ordered pair 1 comma 1. Our last x is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 2 is 4, so we get the ordered pair 2 comma 4. All right, let's try an exercise. We want to give the domain and range of the following relation and determine the equation that describes each relation. So here's the relation. We have 1, negative 4, 2, comma, negative 8, 3, comma, negative 4, 4, comma, negative 16. So domain is the x's. So for domain, you should get 1, 2, 3, and 4. Your range is your y's. So you should have negative 4, negative 8, negative 12, negative 16. And when you write an equation, what they're saying is, how do you figure out y? How do you figure out the second number? Y equals what do you do to x? So when we write the equation, we always start with y equals, and then you have to tell me, what are you doing to this x value every single time to get x? Well, I'm looking, well, 1 is x and negative 4 is y. Well, how did I get from 1 to negative 4? Well, I could say I subtract 4. That could be it. It could be x minus, or I'm sorry, between 1 and negative 4, I would be subtracting 5. So I could say, well, I just subtract 5. x minus 5 is my equation. That's how I get y. y is equal to x minus 5. But it has to work for every single one. So now I go to my next one. If my equation was x minus 5, then it would be 2 minus 5. And 2 minus 5 is negative 3. It's not negative 8. So that equation doesn't work. So I have to go all the way back to the beginning to 1 and negative 4. So other than subtracting 5, what's another way I can get to 1 to negative 4? Well, I can multiply 1 by negative 4 to get negative 4. So my equation would be y equals x times negative 4, or negative 4x, right? So y is equal to negative 4x. That's how I'm getting from x to y. So let's test it. If y is equal to negative 4x, then I should be able to do negative 4 times 2. Well, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Oh, that works. Okay, let's keep working. 
Negative 4 times 3. Well, negative 4 times 3 would be negative 12. Oh, that works. Good job. So now let's do negative 4 times 4. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. Good, that one works too. So our equation, to get our y values, what we did every time is we multiplied x by negative 4, which is red negative 4x. Okay, next one. So we have negative 9 to negative 3, negative 6 to negative 2, negative 3 to negative 1, and then 0 to 0. So I'm not, domain and range, I put the answers up there. You can see if that's what you would get to. Uh, what I really want to concentrate is getting the equation. How are we getting the y's? How did we get negative 3? How did we get negative 2? How did we get negative 1? How did we get 0? How are we getting y? y equals what? We are writing an equation. y equals what? So how did we get from negative 9 to negative 3? How did we get from negative 6 to negative 2? How did we get from negative 3 to negative 1? How did we get from 0 to 0? So you can start with the first one, negative 9 and negative 3. You might say, well, I can add 6 to negative 9, and that gives me negative 3. So that means my equation would be x plus 6, right? I take whatever my x is, which was negative 9, and I add 6 to it and I get my y, which is negative three. Okay, so let's see if it works for the next one. Negative six plus six is zero. Ooh, it's supposed to be negative two. So that theory doesn't work. Back to the drawing board. What's another way to go from negative nine to negative three? Well, I can divide by three, right? Negative nine divided by three is negative three. That works. Negative six divided by three is negative two. Okay, so it's still working. Negative three divided by three is negative one. That works as well. Zero divided by three is zero. That still works, okay? So that is how we're getting our y. In order to get the second number, we are dividing our first number by three. In order to get y, we're dividing x by three every single time. In order to get y, we divide x by 3. In order to get y, we divide x by 3. In order to get y, we divide x by 3. So our equation should be y equals, how do we get y? y equals x divided by 3. Okay, however, now that we are fancy mathematicians, well, we can say, well, dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. So our equation becomes y equals 1 third x. All right, that's all we have for today. It is your turn. You're going to try 9.2, number 2 through 6 evens.